In this video, I'm gonna show you the best rendering settings to use in After Effects for all the different projects. Hey there, my name is Cameron with Motion Science, and I've been working with After Effects for over 20 years now. And in that time, render settings have come and gone and they've changed quite a bit. But in today's video, I wanna show you the render settings, the containers, the codecs, that you should be using on your projects right now. Okay, here we are inside of After Effects. And when rendering out of After Effects, we have two ways of doing that. One way is to use the render queue, which we see here. And the second way is to use the media encoder application that we will take a look at in just a second. Now, if you don't know how to set up a render, you're gonna go to your composition, you're gonna go up to composition, add to render queue. And when you do that, it adds the composition to the render queue down here and there's a couple different settings. There's, there's render settings, which we see here set to best. There's output to, which is where we're gonna tell After Effects to render to and what it's gonna be called. And then there's output module. Now yours probably doesn't say ProRes 422HQ. That doesn't matter because all you need to do is click on it and you can launch the output module settings. So when we talk about rendering, we have to talk about codecs and containers. The codec is the actual software that does the compressing of your video file while the container is the package the final project is delivered in for playback. And the most common containers are MOV and MP4 files. Now, once you pick a container like a QuickTime, you have format options here, and these are known as codecs. Codecs are a method for encoding and decoding video data. Or in other words, it's the way that the video data, the audio data, the graphics are encoded or compressed. The more compressed a file, the smaller the file size is gonna be. Uh, you can also lose image quality in compression. The least compressed file is going to be a larger file size and look better as well. So looking at the codex for our QuickTime, we have animation, which is gonna look really awesome, but it's gonna have, be a really large file size. And then we have Apple ProRes, which is an industry standard for delivering a final delivery of your motion design piece to a client. Typically, I'm gonna use Apple ProRes 422HQ, um, but you can use 422. LT is more of a format for getting a client approval. Same with proxy. Apple ProRes 444 is a super high res file that includes information for an alpha channel. So we have uh, that last four here is actually representative of our alpha channel. There's also a lot of other codecs listed here. There may be additional ones that you have if you're on a Windows machine. Now, if I leave this on ProRes 422HQ and I click OK, uh, you can see that I am not able to add color plus alpha. And if you don't understand what alpha is, it's basically the transparency of a file. So if I wanna include alpha, I need to go back into my format options, click on 4444, click okay. And I can go back and now I am able to select RGB plus alpha. I also have my audio settings here. I typically leave it on auto, but you can put output on or output off and adjust settings here as well. Now, if you wanna to render to any type of format for client approval, or you're going to the web, I'm going to recommend that you use the media encoder. How we do that is we go back to our composition window, composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. It's going to launch Media Encoder. And here we are inside of Media Encoder. And you can see it gives you an output and a preset. So basically this is the container and this is the codec. So if I want to use QuickTime, I can do that here. Uh, or I can go down to something like H.264, which is gonna give me a pretty good compression. And I can pick from presets. Now I have pre-built presets up here that I've created for myself. Under those, we have a lot of different presets that we can use. I personally like to use high quality 1080p uh, as a preset. It's a really awesome preset to use for things like YouTube. I also use it for client approvals and things like that. Now, if I wanna go in, I can actually click on that preset and I can go in and start changing parameters about that preset, adjusting the codec. So this composition has no audio in it, so I'm gonna immediately turn off the audio. 
I'm gonna scroll down under video settings here. I'm gonna render at maximum depth. Keep on scrolling down. You can adjust these settings if you want to. Typically I don't. Uh, VBR one pass or VBR two pass or constant bit rate is totally up to you. Uh, this is what the target bit rate is for the preset I chose, which is 20 and a maximum bit rate of 24. Again, you can play around with these settings. If you're sending a file off to a client uh, and it doesn't have to be super high res, I would crank these values way down. Typically when you're sending a file to a client, you wanna keep that file as small as possible. Now going down here, I can see the estimated file size is 10 megabytes. And that's pretty good for a client review. That's actually really good. But if for some reason I need to turn that down, all I need to do is just crank this value down here. You can see now we're down to an estimated file size of four megabytes. I may turn this one down as well. And I can click OK and we're ready to render. I can also go ahead and select that output command D to duplicate it. And I can change my container here to something like a QuickTime. And you can see there's a lot of different presets in here as well. And I can pick a preset that I've created. I can also do the same thing where I click and come in and put in some different settings here. It's completely up to you. Media encoder is very, very deep. But the main thing I want to get across here is when you are rendering for client previews or you're going to social media channels, you want to typically work with H.264, uh, which you can see here, or H.265 HEVC, which is actually a smaller file format, but can take a little bit longer to encode. Those are two great ones for that. If you are rendering for client purposes and you need to have a high res file, I'm gonna recommend that you stick with Apple ProRes 422HQ or one of these variations of it or Apple ProRes 4444 uh, or a variation of that as well. I hope that you really enjoyed this lesson as much as I loved teaching it. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer them for you. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to this channel. It helps other people find this channel as well. If you're looking to upgrade your design skill set, master the art of style, and execute like a pro, I have a course called Stylecraft that you can check out at motionscience.tv. You can also learn more about this course by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Cameron, and this is Motion Science. <music>